I've had a lot of requests lately to talk more about the psychology behind how women move on from divorce. There's this common myth out there that it's guys who just move on out there having sex with everybody, just rebounding so fast from their divorce. But the reality is that it's not that way. That's how the movies and the TV shows like to portray it. But the men that I talk to, you guys that I communicate with on this channel and in my practice, that's not the story you're telling me. I talk to so many of you who are devastated by your divorce, and yet it seems like your ex-wife is just fine. She's out there dating. She's got a new relationship. Maybe she's even engaged or married again. How do women move on so fast from divorce? Today, I am going to talk about three possible explanations for why she moved on so fast. And guys, I know this isn't the case with everybody. Not every woman moves on so fast, and a lot of guys do move on quickly. But if you're here and you're watching this, I'm guessing that you need some closure, you need some peace of mind, and you need to finally understand what's going on and how she moved on so quickly. The first possible reason is the most painful. So I'm going to start with that one and it's like ripping off the band-aid. So brace yourselves a little bit for this one, you guys. One reason that she may have moved on so quickly is because she actually did fall out of love with you. And now it's not that simple. I'm going to explain exactly how this works and what happens because it's not that you are a terrible person. It's not that you are a bad guy or unlovable. It actually has nothing to do with you if she fell out of love with you. Her falling out of love with you is just her believing really strongly her subconscious thoughts. So if you watch my videos, you know I talk a lot about the relationship between what we think and how we feel. Our thoughts have a huge role in dictating our emotions, and that is true of love. Love is a feeling. Love is an emotion. So when our thoughts change, our feelings change. And often our thoughts change, of course they change, throughout our lives. But most of us are walking around thinking that whatever thoughts come into our head are ours, that they're true. We walk around believing the stories that our brain tells us. But those stories aren't necessarily ours and they aren't necessarily true. So I'm going to give you an example from my personal life, which I know I don't do a lot, but I think in this case it might really fit and it might help some of you. So when I was in college, when I was very young, I had a serious relationship with a great guy. He was awesome. He was very sweet. He was very funny. He was very loving. He adored me. And we got in an accident. We were young and we were stupid and we were on a scooter on some big road that we had no business being on and we got hit by a car. And I was laying on the ground and I tried to stand up and I couldn't. And at the time I didn't know it, I just had really bad road rash. I was actually fine, but my leg was in agony and I fell down and I couldn't get up and I was terrified. And in that moment, all of the adrenaline is running and I am full on panic thinking I'm gonna die. And I remember he walked over to me, my boyfriend at that time, and he looked down at me and he walked away and he couldn't bear to look at me. And in that moment, I remember so badly what I wanted was him to comfort me. Like I wanted him to be there with me, right? It's a very primal human thing. I'm alone. I'm terrified. I want comfort. From his perspective, he was feeling so much guilt and so much anger at himself because here I was hurt and he felt like it was his fault. It all worked out fine. There was a lovely passerby who was a doctor who came and sat with me and I, we went to the hospital. We both had some road rash. Like It was no big deal in the end. We were okay. But something changed in my subconscious beliefs about my boyfriend in that moment. When I rationally look at it, and even then when I rationally looked at it, I understood what was going on. He felt responsible. He felt guilty. And, he, and it was causing him pain to see me there. And he was overwhelmed by that and walked away. Even at the time, I understood that. What I did not realize was that I had a subconscious belief that had started. That subconscious belief said, when you need him, he's not going to be there. You can't count on him. He's not reliable. He doesn't love you enough. I didn't even notice that seed had been planted. I had that moment there on the asphalt where I was afraid and it got planted in my brain. That thought took root. Over the next few months, it just simmered there and I wasn't even aware of it until one day I just noticed that I wasn't attracted to him anymore. I didn't want to have sex with him. I didn't want to talk to him. I didn't want to be intimate or open up to him. I found myself like really rejecting his presence. And you know, here I was, I was like 21 years old. I just assumed I'd fallen out of love with him. I thought that love was just something that happens. And if it's meant to be between two people, you'll feel it. And I didn't feel it. And I didn't want to be with him. And I broke up with him and he did not understand. And I couldn't really explain it. I just didn't love you anymore. Right? How do you, I don't know why. I just don't. When I look back, I know exactly what happened. 
this thought started in my brain. It was subconscious and I just believed it automatically. Knowing what I know now about thoughts, about brains, about how we can manage our minds and about what love really is. Love is a conscious choice. Love is a conscious choice about how we choose to think about another person. And if we don't take charge of how we choose to think, then it's just random chance about what thoughts pop into our head, which ones we hold on to, which ones we believe, which has nothing to do with the other person. It has to do with our own insecurities, our own fears, our own desires. That's what dictates the thoughts that we latch on to if we're not consciously analyzing and managing them. So I just had this thought in my head, well, I can't count on him. He's not going to be there for me. And because I didn't know anything about looking at my own brain or managing my own thoughts, I just let that thought grow and grow and I believed it and it grew deeper until it started to change the way I felt. Something I want to be crystal clear on, you guys, if this is what's happened for your ex-wife, maybe for a very different reason, but if she has had a thought that has changed and she's fully believing it and she feels like she's fallen out of love with you, what I am telling you that people can choose to manage their minds and that love is a choice, it does not matter. You cannot make her change her mind. You cannot make her believe another thought. That work is hers. She has to come to it if and when she is ready for it. Trust me, if my ex-boyfriend could have done something to change the way I was thinking and feeling, he absolutely would have. And it doesn't matter that I could have done it at the time. I could have managed my mind. I could have changed the way I was thinking and the way I felt about him. But I didn't know that. I 100% believe this thought and I 100% felt out of love with him. There was nothing he could do about it. So I'm not telling you that this is about thoughts and feelings to give you hope that it's going to change her mind. It is not. You have to let that hope go. The reason I am explaining this in terms of thoughts and feelings is because I want you to know that it doesn't have anything to do with you. These are thoughts that have come into her mind that she is believing that she thinks are absolutely true, that she thinks are 100% real, and that she is fully committed to. That has nothing to do with you. That has to do with her, with her lifetime of thoughts and beliefs that she has learned over and over. It's about which thoughts jive with her story, with the way she makes sense of the world. And it's also to do with the fact that she probably has no idea that she has much say in who she loves. All right, let's keep going. The second reason that she might have moved on so quickly is because she compartmentalized her emotions around the divorce. So compartmentalizing our emotions is essentially just taking them and setting them aside, like in another room in our brain and closing the door on them so that we can go about our day-to-day -day lives. It's often talked about as a negative thing that we're ignoring some really important emotions. It can actually be really useful. In fact, some counselors teach people to compartmentalize as an act of self-love or self-care. Because when you set those emotions aside, you can be really rational. You can act in what you think is your best interest. These things can be really helpful in a divorce, right? In the logistical and the legal side of divorce. They can help you get your life together, be moving on, making things happening, going to work, taking care of your children. Compartmentalizing those emotions can help you get through all of this. And it can make it look like you've just moved on can make it look like you've just closed off that chapter and off you go. Because in a lot of ways, someone who's done that has. The important thing to know about compartmentalizing is that those emotions are still there and they still need to be dealt with. They need to be addressed. So I like this one for you guys to think about because it doesn't mean that she doesn't have any feelings for you or that she's not grieving the divorce or that she doesn't have... She's got all of that. She's just set it aside in another room and shut the door on it so that she can go forward and move on. If you find that your divorce is really limiting your life, it's affecting your relationships, maybe it's affecting your ability to go to work and live your day-to-day -day life, compartmentalizing might be a useful tool for you as well. But it comes with a huge warning. You can set them aside for a moment and get on with your day-to-day -day life, but you need to make a plan. And I would encourage you to put it in writing, like on this date, I am gonna work with these emotions and enlist help for that. Get a good coach, get a good therapist, get somebody who can help you take those emotions out of the box, look at them all and work through them. You've gotta do that work. But that might be where she's at. She might've just set them aside for now so that she can move forward. So that's one way that women move on quickly. The third way, how women move on so fast after divorce. The third way is that she didn't, that it's an illusion. This is really, really common. 
you guys, that it looks like she's just moved on. She's in a new relationship. She's doing whatever she's doing. Very, very often, that is a way that she is coping with all of the emotions, all of the pain, all of the regret, all of the grief around the divorce. She might be out partying. She might be going on dates. She might be doing all kinds of things. That does not mean that she has moved on. It might look like it to you. You cannot know what is actually happening in her head and in her heart, even if she tells you, because she may not be willing to tell you how much it hurts. Are you willing to let her know? So many of the men I talk to are like, I don't want to give her the satisfaction of knowing how hard this is for me. She might be feeling the same way. So a lot of her moving on might not be moving on at all. It might be trying to cope, trying to cover up, trying to put on a brave face and look like everything's okay. So those are three reasons, three ways how women move on quickly after divorce. But I hope that you pull out of this is that none of those reasons are because you're a horrible person and not enough and she never cared about you. That's not what this is about. This is about her own thoughts, her own feelings, her own defense mechanisms, the ways that she's learned to be in relationships and what love is and all of that since childhood. It really has very little to do with you, her moving on. Now your divorce definitely has to do with both of you. And I'm not saying that you have absolutely no role in this or that you're not at fault in some way. What I am saying is that perhaps you should consider looking at your divorce and what happened afterwards in a new light. The divorce, instead of looking at it as your fault and her fault and trying to figure out whose fault it is more and who's the worst person in it, I want you to think about the divorce as being caused by the negative cycle of interaction between you and her. So reframe your divorce. Stop making it about you and stop making it about her. Blame the negative cycle of interaction between you. That gives you something tangible that you can work on going forward to have healthier, happier relationships in the future. And then when you look at how she's moved on, if she has moved on quickly, I want you to reframe that too. That has nothing to do with you. How she reacted to that divorce and moved on, that is all about her, what she's thinking and what she's feeling. And what that means is that the way you are dealing with the divorce not moving on, perhaps, is also all about you, not her. That's about your thoughts and your feelings, which you can take charge of, which you can learn how to manage, which you can learn how to be intentional about in the future. My main message here is stop worrying so much about how she moved on and start taking responsibility for how you are going to move on and how you are going to make your life bigger and richer and fuller and more connected, more connected to other people, more deep, intimate connections with others. It is so easy to let your brain's automatic stories take over after divorce and decide that you are never going to trust again, that you are never going to love again, that you're never going to have an amazing relationship again, to isolate yourself and be miserable. I talked to men who have been miserable for years after their divorce. It's time to take charge of your mind, start to question your beliefs, and intentionally create a better, more connected future for yourself, not one where you are alone and isolated and perhaps even sunk into self-doubt or self-loathing. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel and click that like button. Help me get these videos out in front of more people and make sure that you see my latest videos as soon as they come out. All right, guys, leave me a comment as well. I'd love to know what you think about all of this and where you're at and what's going on in your life as you move on from your divorce.